play. Didn't actually blow his flash at all during that play. And I think that that was something that I know I praised him a bit coming into this week because he was creative with his jungle routes, but then it just seemed like he disappeared. And Adesk was talking about Dignitas being a reactive team. I think a lot of that needs to change from Chaser stepping up and being more proactive and causing the team to follow with him. Especially on a team, especially on a champion, excuse me, like Lee Sin, one that has got to go in there, make those mechanically precise plays and be confident in his ability to do so. That's what you want to see from somebody is being able to know exactly what your limits are and pushing those. Yeah, in the mid game, late game, Lee Sin is kind of like what I would consider a pawn in chess. If you can get a really good piece for your pawn, you're just you're like, golden. You're like, ah, oh, that was my job, right? You start off as being something that can cause a lot of pressure, but then you change it to you're the, the queen pawn. You're the start. You exactly. can do everything. You're like, oh god, everybody has to worry about me. I could be anywhere. I have so much threat. And then he's a pawn, and it's like, oh, got your rook. Like, yep. Kick back the mid laner. Still a value Let's trade. Go. Still yeah. a value trade. I jumped in the back and died, but so did your guy, who's way more important than me. Yeah. That's kind of the job. For the bands this time around, Dignitas going to be removing that Olaf first and foremost yet again with Varus and LeBlanc following that one up. Graves and Malzahar, again, the same first two bands from Phoenix One. We'll have to see if they finish off with the last one in the same style as game number one or if they want to switch things up here a little bit in game number two. Elise is going to be banned away. They picked it last time, but they don't want Dig taking it this time around. Yeah, it's also a comfort champion for Chaser as well. And then, like you said, they first picked it both as denial pick and to have it for themselves and have comfort from Eidos. But now, still on the table, the Rise up there, Jin, Jace, Renekton. Some days thinking about that Jace. Camille. I mean, Ryu did a lot of work on this last time around, so you might as well keep that out of his hands, grab it for yourselves too, as the Fizz Hover comes in from Zig. It's a bit of an unusual pick in its own, but We've already gone through a series today, Zyrene, where we saw Mordekaiser and Blitzcrank not just in the same series, but in the same game. So I'm just completely open to anything at this point in time. Yeah, it's a great bottom lane. They both take Relic Shields, give each other CS back and forth, and you hook somebody, you have extra movement speed towards your guy. So it's honestly a great combination and makes it a kill lane early. Do you remember the days when that item first came out and it was really busted and people just quit playing jungle and played double melee yeah. top laners with <laughs> Relic Shields? BS, dude. That was a weird time in League of Legends <laughs> history. I had no idea what was going on, but Phoenix One going to go ahead and start off this first phase of their own draft by locking in the Ash Ooh. and picking up the Rengar for Meteos. Yeah, NA Rengar might strike again. Not Meteos, not the two games that he ended up losing yesterday against CLG were his two Rengar games. Rengar, 0% win rate in that series, even when Smithy played it. So, going back to that. I always... When stuff like that happens, I always love reading the commentary on Twitter and Reddit because you see the guys saying things like, hey guys, Rengar lost in the first two games. What's the game plan for number three? How about Rengar? Oh, sounds great. Yeah, sounds like great. Yeah, lock let's, it in. let's lock that Rengar right in there. To but, be fair. Hey, this is a different day. Exactly. This could be a whole new dawn for the NA Rengar, and maybe Meteos is the one to usher in that new dawn. We'll have to see. His target this game is going to be an Ezreal picked up for Lod on the side of Dignitas, as now Dig has to think about what they want to run in the jungle, and the answer is going to be Lee again. Yeah, when you see the Rengar, you're basically like, I don't want to play Jin in any world against this guy. I love my team, but you guys cannot peel worth a damn to stop this Rengar from getting on me. So he's going to play the Ezreal, which is so much harder to get on to. Uh, he can leap away from the jump with his E, and also, that's what ended up uh, winning the match from Counter Logic Gaming against Phoenix One yesterday as well. Stixe on the Ezreal, standout performance. Such a clean game. Such a good game from him, too. And that was up against that Rengar, so it was so hard to close that gap. Yeah, what's a better target for a Rengar than an AD carry who roots himself? Jin is just such a, a lovely matchup for Rengar to go into there, but Phoenix One going to go ahead, grab their top laner as the final pick in the first part of the picking phase. So now we're on to ban phase number two. They're going to go ahead and take the rumble off the board, make sure Someday's not getting his hands on that one. Yep, take the Rumble away from Someday, which would be the good matchup into the Shen early. Uh, interesting from Phoenix One, they have a lot of engage. They seem to be a team that drafts heavy engage. They don't seem to be so much about that poke life, unless it's like a really quick one with a Jace. Uh, but they're more about hard engage with Arrow, jump in with Meteos, try to get a Cocoon or some type of CC. I'll be interested to see if the Orianna ban comes out here from Dignitas, or if it's something like a Rise because Orianna would go really well with the composition from Phoenix One so far. Double top lane focus coming out from Phoenix One. Rumble and Nautilus removed. Syndra, the first option 
taken off the board by Dignitas. We'll have to see if that Orianna mid lane focus comes out or if they have another type of a plan. Only a couple seconds left to go before they do have to lock that decision in, and it's going to be Ari. Ah. We've seen some strange stuff. Uh, we've seen an Ari uh, be played. We've seen a Talon get played. We've seen a Talon ban yesterday as well. Uh, so mid laners are kind of just playing a whole wide variety of things that banning mid lane in your second phase just kind of becomes, we don't want to deal with this in any world. It's not, hey, we're in a banning rise. We're banning this really OP thing. It's just, we don't want to deal with this specific champion. Yeah, the only one that people think needs to be removed is the LeBlanc in uh, pick ban, and that's it. LeBlanc, very, very dangerous still, but Nami is locked in for Phoenix One as the first pick of the second part of the draft. They're going to be having that same Nami Ash lane that they did in game number one. We saw how effective the Nami was both during the laning phase and when the mid game fights broke out. There was one fight where his heal was specifically what kept Ryu alive. So, not surprised to see this pick coming out again, and the response is a regular old unbenching. Dignitas gonna be releasing that into the wilds, seeing what they can do when they unload the toad, unclog the frog, do whatever else they wanna do with Tom Kench, because he is on the team this time around, gonna be looking to keep that Ezreal, that Jace, and anybody else safe when the Rengar and the Shen invisible two-man torpedo comes in, looking to lock them down. Yep, and so that's gonna be a big thing that Meteos has to take into consideration, as well as zigging the top lane on that Shen. Somebody gets Ash arrowed, the Tom Kench can just eat them up and run them to safety, or he might build a QSS for himself at some point later on in the game uh, and just soak all the arrows as much as possible. One more pick for Phoenix One. They're hovering that Orianna that you were talking about might be a ban for Dignitas, and it is going to be locked in. The final pick on the side of Dignitas with the Gragas in the top lane. We've seen this a little bit so far. Going to be played by someday this time around. Means Jace will again be mid like we usually expect to see him these days. So tanks in the top lane. High damage potential there in the mid lane. High damage potential in the jungle. Of course, more of that for Rengar than Lee Sin. Yeah. Uh, this is actually exactly the same composition that P1 ran in game three yesterday. But instead of a rumble, they have a Shen. They have the Rengar. They have the Orianna, the ball combination. And then they have the Ash and the Nami bottom lane, which just seems to be such a... A high priority lane for Phoenix One. They have first picked Ash in that previous series against Counter Logic Gaming when Jin was still on the table, and they didn't really care. And you know that combination that you just rattled off the Rengar, the Shen, and the Orianna that is incredibly deadly. Rengar goes invisible, Stan United is placed onto him. That's the two man torpedo that I was talking about. And then you've got the ball on top of it. If they can land that onto a valuable target, it is just going to eviscerate Dignitas lines. Yep. Ryu, though, in that game three, his shockwaves not really on point. And that was the big decider there, was his shockwaves com combined with the rumble ulties. But we won't be seeing that this game. We'll be seeing Zig on Shen. And so now they have a, a composition that really relies on Meteos getting in uh, onto the back line. And so someday it'll be his job and Chaser's job to keep them away. Yeah, and Dignitas honestly has quite a few tools to keep people away and keep people safe. You have a Gragas Barrel that knocks people away. You have a Lee Sin Kick that knocks people away. You have a Jace Hammer that knocks people away. And if they're still trucking after all that, you gobble them up with the Kench. Everybody's spawning into Summoner's Rift onto that summoning platform already, just chomping at the bit, waiting at the gate to run off. You're seeing a couple of pings there in the top part of the river coming out from Phoenix One. Mm -hmm. More now into the mid lane two, as they're heading out slightly more clumped up than last time. Everybody heading towards that northern part of the map. So maybe going to see some more early vision attempts from these guys trying to get a couple wards down at the enemy boss. Yeah, just make sure Chaser doesn't do anything cute early on. We'll see. And they're waiting here. I wonder if they think that someday we'll go for the invade because he did last time as a counter. And they're trying to read him. Yeah, he's gonna walk he's in gonna, for he's gonna it. Pretend there's nobody there. Hello. Big arrow. Double. Meteos looking to make the play. The bubble comes out. Someday gonna be jumping away. Very nice moves. Flashes himself forward towards the enemy, and then body slams over the wall. Whew. Both top laners are actually in a strange position now. Like someday doesn't have flash. Chaser doesn't have flash. So that's really good for Phoenix One. But Zig had to take taunt, and someday took body slam. And someday has a little bit more wave clear, a little bit more ability to actually uh, trade heavily. Uh, Zig doesn't have that Q, so he's kind of weak in the lane right now. He'll probably get shoved in. Yeah, both of them didn't want to take that ability at yeah. the start. They would both have preferred something else, but the attempt from Phoenix One was there. It is just going to be that flash for the flash in the top lane. 
Well, not in the top lane, excuse me, the flash of the jungler and the top laner on the side of Dignitas. And right here, Phoenix One giving a hard leash to Meteos. They're gonna give him everything. They're gonna give him damage from Shen. They're gonna give him an Orianna Ball. They're gonna try to get him up there as soon as possible. Uh, and we'll see what happens here, because this could be Meteos going for a gank to the top that's flashless, and will probably shove in because it's the Gragas has more AoE available to him than the Shen. This may be Chaser's two minute and 30 second gank that we see coming. And one thing I want to go ahead and point out real quick as well, talking about these top laners, you can see due to our lovely UI edition of the keystones on the side of the screen there, it is Grasp of the Undying for Zig versus the Courage of the Colossus for Sunday. So Sunday is going to have the big shields in the team fights, but the laning power is going to be more there and more evident for Zig. Yeah, uh, Shen's pretty much always take that because of the trading power and the percent HP. And it looks like Medios is not going to go for the Krug Star. He's not going to go for the third uh, camp as that. Which is a little odd because, I mean, you could definitely cheese someday here if you wanted to. He's just not a fan of it, man. He nope. doesn't want to go for those cheese plays. Keen going to hit level two and immediately jump in onto Ryu. Grab some damage on him there. Now walking off to the side just to make sure that nothing's going on too crazy just yet. Throws down a ward to make sure of that. But Meteos is actually going to be on the other side of the map. Now moving into Chaser's territory. He These he two flash. are so surely going to find one each on one. other here. Meteos looking to make the one-on-one -on -one happen. Finding a lot of bursts with that Rengar. Even more coming through. Uh! Chaser almost able to do it, and he does. Chaser wins the 1v1. Now Adrian forced to flash over the wall. Arrow's going to be grabbing the Blast Plant out as well. A mistake for Meteos. Yeah, Meteos got there just a second and a half too late where Chaser had the setup. Chaser saw Meteos approaching. Now it puts the bottom lane in a compromising position where Specialist gets to walk forward and zone them off the wave. And you saw how close that 1v1 was. That was literally a one auto attack 1v1. And the difference, like you said, is that Chaser was in the brush and got the drop on him. Yep, he got there just a little bit sooner. And that's all that matters there. He had the blue buff as well for a little bit more CDR on a little bit more energy regen. Don't know if that would have made the difference there. It didn't look as closely in that moment. But also, Meteos, he still had his flash. If he had been prepared to flash Q or anything like that, uh, it would have been a very different fight. Someday going to be bopped around a little bit by Zig there in the top side, utilizing the power of that Grasp of the Undying, as well as just his kit in general to shield himself up and take control in those trades. But here's this 1v1. Yep, gets the E, gets the opener there. Ooh, so incredibly yeah, close. Literally an auto. Literally one auto attack. You can't even fault the guy for making a play, like, uh, making a play or a decision like that just because it was so close. Yeah, and he knew that Chaser didn't have Flash, but that's that's the difference there. A lot of Dignitas fans in the audience today. 63% oh. think that they're going to be walking away with the win, but Meteos wants to make sure they don't. He has to redeem himself for the last play, find an oh, opportunity Keen to just get himself walked involved. up. Why'd he do that? Keen is up here. The bullet right. doesn't connect, though, so gets himself away from that unpunished. Yeah, that was uh, strange. Meteos trying to help out Ryu. He knew that he chunked out Chaser, so trying to give Ryu a better back. Zig sees the Chaser is on the top side. Someday's got quite a lot of a wave to deal with here, so don't expect to see him leaving this anytime soon. He's going to be hanging out, clearing these out. Zig moving himself right back into the lane. Does not want to allow this to freeze in place, allow Someday to have everything where he wants it. So he's going to keep shoving these up. But Someday has so much CS to pick up here, so he has just access to this. This will be really easy. He's going to be about, let's say, six or seven up, depending on if he CSs that perfectly. Meanwhile, Lod left here in the bottom lane with a very, very slight CS edge over his opponent. And with this being an Ezreal versus Ash lane, that means neither one of these two is going to be going for lethality. Yes. Uh, and I've actually been noticing for Arrow, he starts boots on Ash, which is something that I've talked about before, where you know, Jin's usually do it, but he's actually changed it over to this champion as well. Uh, but he takes Fervor, too. Since the nerfs to Warlord's Bloodlust, it seems like he doesn't want to take it, and also he has Adrian who will play Soraka or Nami and give him sustain, so the Ash's trades are actually quite good. Uh, and he rushes the Berserker's Grief, so he has pretty much free agency to decide when to trade and when he doesn't want to trade. Falling a little bit behind in terms of farm, but there's a lot of standing CS here for him as well. So just kind of going to be firing out those volleys, waiting for Dig to push this lane in towards him so we can farm that up in relative safety. Jungler's not really around the area bottom side right now. Meteo's clearing out his wolf camp. Chaser's going to be doing the same to his. Both of these guys not level 6 yet. Of course, Ryu and Keen just now ticking that. As Someday and Zig find theirs too. And now that Zig is level 6, Irene, you've always got to be careful if you're Dignitas because you've got to be expecting that stand united on any play you try to make. 
denied control ward. Actually got replaced. Yes, you do have to worry about Zig in the top lane. That's the power of the Shen. You bring it because you can get around and be mobile. And here, look, four people to the top side. They're actually bringing Tom Kench here, bringing Lot here as well. But that's the response, right? If yep. Stand United is going to save four out of five people on the team, you go for that last man. You go for the guy who can't save himself. Mm -hmm. How does Zig play this? Huh? Well, he plays it by oh. taunting his way out of the Sonic Wave and just walks away from all of it. Yep. A lot of times, a lot of times, uh, the Lee Sin will put down the ward and jump to it and close the distance and then get the slow. But because they didn't really have Lod on the right side of the turret and it was special instead, they're just gonna take that one right quick. They have momentum as well. They can push for another wave. They'll get the top side jungle. Red buff is up. They know it's up, and so Chaser will probably take that too try to maximize their time. Yeah, Dignitas has so many bodies up there that there's just no way to stop that momentum right now. Phoenix One's gonna respond by taking the turret in the bottom side, but it's very similar to what we saw in game number one. It's a trade, but that always favors the faster team. Yeah, but right here, there's an Infernal Drake that's up, and this might be the Infernal Drake going over to Phoenix One. Same as yesterday. P1 series, first two games, Infernal Drake both times, first Drake. This team just has a natural ability to force these things to spawn. Lodnik special over the wall, shouldn't be able to do anything with this. Meteos to smite, have no problem beating out a mystic shot over the wall, and that's Drake number one for Phoenix one. Some extra damage for them, and considering they're only 500 gold behind, this game couldn't be more close. First Drake, 77% of the time for Phoenix one in spring split. Number one in the league. So the highly prioritized objective for them, and I actually think uh, one of the things you can take from that is they like playing around bottom. They have a very strong bottom side of the map with Arrow, and then Ryu also backs that up. The imports that they brought in, uh, I've talked to some of the members of Phoenix One, and they really do say that the bottom side of the map is super strong. Uh, that, you no know, playing to it seems to be pretty easy to do. And Scar even mentioned as well, the top side of the map with Zig, he doesn't really need much. He's low economy. He's able to dodge ganks up top. He's not going to die to it. Yeah, you just saw him. The four-man collapse attempt, he just gets himself out of it, doesn't really have any issue. Yeah, but he is somebody that the, the option is always there, and he can actually use the gold that you give him. But he's usually left on an island because why wouldn't you give gold to the most gold-efficient AD carry in the entire league with Arrow? Yeah, you have one of the best AD carries around as your carry, and you've got a low econ top laner. It just writes itself. Here's what you guys are supposed to be doing. Drake control is going to be yours. Yeah. Arrow and Adrian now, though. Without an enemy turret here in the bottom lane, their opponents have kind of left, decided instead to head elsewhere, hanging around here in the mid lane, gonna be clearing out one of those control wards. Keen with his blue buff should feel pretty, pretty comfortable spamming these shockwaves and acceleration gates towards Ryu, but they gotta connect if you want the damage first and foremost. Ryu clears out some of those minion waves on his own and interrupts the back. Feels bad. Good ward placement as well. Uh, around the wall, make sure that I actually like, really like this. Uh, up against Jace, Jace is like to put wards in the middle of the lane up, and you need to do it against him because he's going to stand back like he is now and try to shock blast you with an acceleration gate. So you want to see that coming, have as much time to respond as possible. Uh, and so that's why that ward is there because it's going to see that fog of war. It's not there just to see the back that just happened. It was there to make sure that he's not shooting out these acceleration gate shock blasts from fog. Because after you take two or three of those, you're feeling in a really bad spot usually, if you're not already dead. So very, very important. Make sure you keep a mind on exactly where those projectiles are going to be coming from and how frequently they're barreling down the lane. <laughs> I actually find this amazing how the priority on boots seems to be so high for Phoenix One members. Uh, Ryu they got the Lost Chapter, and then he full builds his Sork Shoes immediately after. It's actually very efficient. I really like it. But then the fact that Arrow first bought Berserker's Griefs just right out of the gate, no other AD to back it up. Uh, it just seems like they value mobility. They value getting to the fights. They value dodging skill shots like the Arcane, uh, sorry, not the Arcane Shift, the Mystic Shot, and also the uh, Acceleration Gate Shock Blast from Keen. Key one's big on the footwear, man. Got to make sure they got those ready to go. Yeah, P1, P1 lifestyle. The <laughs> P1 lifestyle. <laughs> and they got those expensive shoes. Dignitas, though. Ninja Tabby's done on the Gragas. Mobility boots on the Lee Sin so we can get around the map a little bit faster. I guess Meteos is the one guy because he's new to P1, so he's not used to that lifestyle. See, he doesn't have any boots yet. So he's the one who's kind of got to get himself acclimated to that. Brown boots still on three different members of Dignitas. So they will be a little bit slower compared to their counterparts. Yeah, someday got boots really early on. Gives him mobility to start engages. Which is, he's honestly a big engage tool here for Dignitas. Uh, I think I would say he's primary engage. 
with Chaser being up there as well. Uh, but then the Moby Boots from Chaser were the first purchase that he made after the first Blood on the back. Uh, so he could get around the map and try to affect it, but he just hasn't found any openings. He hasn't found anything he really wants to force. He got chunked out by Meteos mid lane earlier, uh, and it seems like investing in those boots didn't really help him fight at all. Shockwave trying to play on Takin. Good damage coming through. Meteos can do it. Still looking to make some kind of a play. Forces out the flash TP. from the enemy mid laner. TP channeled but canceled. Someday not going to be joining this fight. That's big, though, because now it's double global for Zig as an advantage over his opponent here. He doesn't have a top lane turret. I, Zig can kind of leave this lane whenever he wants. He won't, he won't lose his top tier two. So now they're going to have to make some type of play here on Dignitas' side to prevent Zig from just running all over the map. Uh, and I think this is right. Someday's going to go towards mid. Someday's going to start, maybe start a fight, try to get at least a global out. Arrow oh. misses, okay. and then Arrow gets kicked. Get away from my turret. I guess. They're going to save the turret for now. A nice shock wave onto, shock blast, excuse me, through the acceleration gate onto Meteos. Going to be scaring him off a little bit. Chaser looking to make some kind of a move here, but without his kick, it's not going to be anything real. Gobbled up by a special and carried to safety. And that's one thing I'm going to be keeping an eye on as this game goes on and as we get into these bigger fights is can a special make the clutch saves that Tom Kench is drafted for? Uh, the arrow landing on somebody, he has to be there. And it's interesting because Tom Kench plays like a, a middle liner uh, where we have your front liners who are going to be up in the face of the enemy. And then you have your back liners who want to be really far back. He has to stand in that middle area and actually position correctly. Support positioning becomes so important on Tom Kench, because you need to get the tongue lashes out on the right people. You need to be able to hit them, you know, and get those autos on the people threatening your backline. Yeah, you gotta peel away the divers while at the same time being ready to save your own guys. Be a little bit tricky sometimes. Yeah, the problem is one mistake usually means your poor little carries are done. Yeah, and also he has a global that allows you to rotate and have pressure in certain areas. Uh, kind of like a one-person realm warp, right? And it brings them along. Or, uh, if done incorrectly, suicide yourself and a friend. My favorite. <laughs> the solo queue special. Yeah, but Tom Kench is kind of like juggling for support. You have to think of so many things simultaneously. Uh, if you drop the ball on one, then your team could obviously die. Infernal Drake number two about to spawn. Someday gonna be chain CC'd here. Gobbled up to safety. Drake special keeping him nice and alive. Arrow comes out, finds its way onto the camp. Meteos That's not in. really going to be a super valuable target. Meteos going to be exhausted. Zig now back into the fight himself. Someday going to be smited by Meteos. Meteos forced to flash back. The heal going to be coming out from Arrow to keep him alive. Meteos taking the most damage in that fight, but he does have heals coming out from Adrian to keep him uh, alive. Someday low as well. That ward is out of the bush, I think, right? Yeah, that ward is not in the uh, bush. But Jean's going to be caught out. The shockwave comes through. X special with another nice save. I said I was going to be watching, yeah? and he's doing the job. But that's exactly what they needed. The Shockwave's now down, the Shen ultimate's down, the Rengar ultimate's down, Ash Arrow is down as well. This might be an Infernal Drake going over to Dignitas because they just have better positioning mid, and they have the cooldowns, whereas Phoenix 1, they have to wait. Yep, Phoenix 1's looking a little exasperated for resources right now. They have no mana left on the Ash, very little mana left on the Nami. Meteo's still recovering his health from what he experienced earlier. Drake going to be started up by Dignitas and burned down rather quickly. They're going to equalize that count overall. Meteos walking a little bit too close, eats a shock blast. I don't see Phoenix 1 finding any real way to punish this. Uh, Meteos I'm trying to look for something. Now they want inside track on mid, and this is the punish. Is Zig gets a clear out bot. He has another global with the teleport. Adrian having to drop the exhaust on the chaser there to keep himself safe. Meteos trying to disengage this one as well, but he's going to be jumped on. Meteos too far forward. A little bit more damage is going to do it. Expecial still looking to find him if he can. Yep. Meteos getting away, and Lod has got the damage. Dignitas find the pick. There's a big auto attack there, too, with a sheen behind it. It looks like it did honestly like 200 damage to him. It did a whole lot, but that's going to be Dignitas going towards this turret. No stand united from Zig. It was just the teleport, and he was never going to use it there as well. And Phoenix won. It felt like they were trying to get greedy and trying to actually go for mid when they don't have position on it. Now they're losing their jungle as well. Someday and Lod and Keen all stealing away this blue buff. They lost their red buff earlier when we saw Dignitas take the top lane tier one for the turret first blood. So the jungle from Phoenix won, not exactly their own this game. We'll look back at what happened to Meteos here. That exhaust blown on the chaser and Meteos. Slowed down, trying to get some distance with the Q. The Q dash distance was actually nerfed in the Rengar nerf. 
All right, there, yeah, that's like a, a health bar and a half, so a lot of damage there coming through from Lod. You don't expect to see that normally, because the Sheens nope. are almost always with the Mystic shots on Ezreal, so you just expect to see big Mystic shots, uh -huh. really <laughs> underwhelming auto attacks, but when you Arcane shift forward, and then the Sheen is on that, it catches you by surprise sometimes. Keen nope. now might be caught out on his own. The bubbles come through. There's so much CC, and Ryu's going to be the one who grabs the kill. Now Phoenix 1, with the enemy mid laner down, are looking for the top lane tier 1. Yeah, that was also the teleport from both Zig and Someday, so, and they both canceled. So cooldown, of course, going to be lower, but that's still that global down from Someday. Keen has teleport as well, so Dick and Toss were looking for a 1-3-1, one, one, but they don't really have the advantages to do so. You can even see in mid lane, it's about 30 CS difference between these two mid laners. Uh, so Keen not really just powered up at all. He was trying to split there, and he got caught out. Adrian taken low. Stand United used onto Meteos by Zig, so that Zig can join this fight. Volley trying to be used for disengage. Zig taunting himself over the wall. Going to be Dragon Chaser with him. Chaser wanted to find a kick there, but good timing from Zig prevented it from happening. Phoenix won. Get away from that fight, that attempt from Dignitas. Yeah, and this is becoming a game of baiting cooldowns, whether it's the teleport from Someday or Keen, or it's Dignitas baiting Stan United's teleports, or even shockwaves and arrows, because we're seeing this vacuum of power that as soon as Phoenix 1 start using those ultimates and they miss or they you know, only hit one person, Dignitas are ready to take a fight then because the threat is now gone. That is the name of the game for these guys. Trinity Force almost completed onto the Ezreal. Mana Moon still stacking up, up to around 520-ish stacks at this point in time. So getting close to the point, we're going to see that evolution in the Muramana. Still going to be a few more minutes. But the Essence Reaper done on the Ash means the crits are starting to come online. And like I mentioned earlier when I said neither one of these 80 carries is going to be going lethality, that means the spikes come later in something like a Varus or a Jin. But once they happen, it's going to be a real threat. Oh, yeah. But also Dignitas, they do have mostly AD composition. They're only going to be building physical damage here in terms of their items. No AP will be in sight. Someday does do percent HP magic damage. Uh, but this allows Zig to build for lane a little bit with just picking up the... Just the cow. Uh, Spectre's cow. And then the rest of his build will most likely be uh, uh, armor here. I don't even know if he'll go for a Titanic Hydra, because all you really need to do is just soak. Yeah, just not die. Just yeah. get in there and be this massive annoyance the enemy team has no way to get through. His appearance will probably be pretty similar to Poppy from the last game, what Someday was looking to do, just stacking all those armor items over and over and over. And if Zig can manage to get tanky enough to deal with that, it's going to be very effective. I mean, look at even Meteos' build. Rengars, sometimes you see them go more damage heavy, sometimes you see more tank heavy. And this game, you are seeing the Ninja Tabby into what I'm assuming is going to be Dead Man's Plate. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. The Dead Man's Plate, where sometimes you'll see them go for the Edge of Night. Or even, you know, I've seen some stuff too, like Sterix, but... I think, this is, I think this is definitely optimal. Oh, yeah. Up against a Lee Sin, Jace, Ezreal composition, yeah. that armor is going to go a very long way in keeping him alive when he jumps in. We've also seen Dignitas isn't afraid to target him when he does jump in. He was the one who almost died in those fights previously. He was the one who died both times yeah, so far. He's, he's the two deaths, right? Uh, so, NA Rengar is starting to strike again. <laughs> oh, no. We had high hopes for you, Meteos. I know. Damn. <laughs> We're still hoping. Looking for some Blast Cone kills again. <laughs> Redeem the NA Rengar. I don't, oh, the Blast Cone. I, I almost forgot about that. I was trying to. <laughs> I brought you back. Had multiple people message me about that last night. What'd you think of the Blast Cone? <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> I mean, it was so great. Uh, the video that was done for the preseason that I voiced over, and apparently it lined up when I said new mechanics to master. It's somebody hitting a blast cone. And like people gave me <laughs> crap for it because they're like, new mechanics, they're the blast cone. Like, yeah, hit hey, the blast cone, go over the wall. <laughs> they're well, in random spots, ladies and gentlemen. You have to learn a little bit more about them. Meteos trying to get himself away. Sonic Wave going to find the mark. Meteos forced to flash over the wall to keep himself alive. Chaser with a good pop on the summoner spell. But oh. now Lod has found Meteos, but he's going to be soaking some damage of his own. Arrow comes over the wall, connects onto Lod right as he's eaten. Perfect. Frame perfect. And Expecial is doing all kinds of work on this Kench. Look at how much damage that Shock Blast did. Yeah, that was a lot of damage there coming through, and it's only going to end up being worse. As time goes on, as he gets more items, Dignitas will pick up this Mountain Drake, gives him threat with the Baron on the table, and a Jace and an Ezreal. This is actually a ton of damage that you could deal to that Baron. Oh, a lot. They've got themselves the Mountain, the Infernal, everything. 
Team oh, they want to fight. solid for themselves. Adrian going to be stand united on. Can the Shen even get into the fight? No, he can't. Zig is not going to be allowed to join this one. Shockwave comes out, not going to be finding Someday. Ryu trying to keep himself alive. Exhaust going to be used. Barrel. Shockblast not finding the mark. Someday still looking to catch up. The barrel is down. Take a swig, Ryu. Someday is grabbing the kill. 1-0 and 2 on the big man. As Phoenix 1 has lost themselves. Oh, two guys so far. They're trying to hide. They're trying to hide. It's not going to work. This is a bad game of hide and seek. Meteos and Zig have got to find some kind of a way out of here. Ah. But 4 versus 2 is not the kind of fight anybody wants to be taking. Lod hanging around in the back, making sure he doesn't walk too close. Yeah, they're trying to buy time so that arrow can shove mid. It's like, at least get oh, something, but it's back. not going to be done. He kicks one into the other, and they are toast. At least Meteos. Zig going to be chased down now as well. Keen popping the flash to go after him. There is no blast cone today. Don't even bother looking. Zig's going to be run down, and Dignitas goes up 6-1. to one. But they bought time for arrow to come back, get pressure mid, pick up the mid turret. Ryu is also back, running down, and Adrian is here as well. The Baron attempt coming out, though. You talked about how they were going to do it fast, and yes, they are. Still 22 minutes. Down to about one-third HP. Chaser and Someday tanky enough to soak for it. The arrow comes out, only hits it special, and Dignitas has found some awesome success. That was super close of being picked up there. And Phoenix won, honestly, in an awful position there, but Someday, the punish, he actually flanks from the top side when the fight begins. His cast was beautiful because it made Arrow have to flash over and go to the other side of the wall, and he's completely cut off from the fight and sectioned off. And this is a composition that is super mobile with the Ezreal, with the fact that they have the Acceleration Gate, and they have this Gragas that can get over walls as well, up against an Orianna, a Nami, and they also have an Ash. So it's honestly quite easy to get really good ultimates off from someday, and he seemed like he was on point for that one. Dignitas now has a 4,000 gold lead. They've got Baron buff up and running on everybody. They're pushing five men strong down the mid lane. Edge of Night active on the Jace to make sure that they can't do anything on him. And this tier two is going to be destroyed very, very rapidly. That one is just done before I can even finish the sentence. Now they've got two more in the side lanes they should be able to pick up with relative ease. And now they're going to the bottom side, pick up that one. Zig still top. San United coming off cooldown in about two seconds here. We haven't seen a combination. We haven't seen a shockwave actually land true. And you can see Ryu building magic penetration immediately after. He's going for the haunting guys. And has an inventory here. And when we started this game, when we started this series, I should say, we saw the words from Lod saying, you know, this team, they don't really know what to expect from us going into this because they've got Cop as this new coach now. And they're doing some amazing stuff in this game, especially with another clutch save onto Lod, keeping him alive from any sort of a threat Phoenix 1 has. And Phoenix 1 has just been denied throughout this game multiple attempts, multiple points by this Kench. Yeah, this is honestly uh, uh, an engage from Phoenix 1 that was more for just getting them off of the turret and wasting time. You can see Jace is actually TPing back into this. Keen wants to take this turret, and that's... I don't think actually Phoenix 1 thought that would happen because Zig is continuing to push. Zig has been pushing this whole time. This is like... This is the right thing to do for Zig, to be honest, because what is the Shen going to contribute when there's a Baron buffed up minion wave coming in? The guy's got no wave clear. He even no. struggles to kill this turret when he's alone. Yeah, he's going to have to ding that thing a few more times with that scalpel to actually manage to yeah. take it's it a, down. But. It's so easy in solo queue to rage at the split pusher, but if the fight's already lost, you lost somebody, or the position is already bad, and he doesn't contribute to the defense at all, then just let him take a turret. In the meantime, though, Dignitas is able to find one inhibitor in the bottom side. The inhibitor turret now in the mid lane. Inhibitor under pressure itself. Lod firing the damage into that one. Yeah, Shockwave is back up for Ryu. It just came off of cooldown. Adrian going to be Adrian. back right into the fight. Stand United going to be used. Shockwave finding no one. Ryu juggled around. Beat down. Keen grabbing the kill on that one. Adrian still low, but still alive. Sonic Wave's going to change that one real fast. Mystic Shot grabbing the kill. Zig, now the target of all five Dignitas members. They've got themselves a 5v3 for the next few seconds. A special showing that he can eat people in a very painful way to unbench that Kinch as Dignitas is heading for the Nexus. First turret now under pressure. The minion wave is coming up. They've got it enchanted with the Baron buff. Meteo's coming around from behind. What is he going to do as a lone Rengar? Looking to make the move onto Chaser. Already saved by a special, though. Spit right back out into the maw of the enemy Nexus turrets. They are done. Arrow can't do anything. And we are going to game number three. 26-minute game there from Dignitas. Deja vu.
really well played as well. That was nine kills to one. They only had gave up one kill early on. And that was one that actually had a lot of people involved in that pick. It was the uh, early one that Ryu had picked up. And this, I got to say, Ryu has not been looking good on that Orianna. Medios has not been looking good on that Rengar. I think the composition has that ball delivery in mind, but it's not happening. It's never happening. And teams are actually drafting for it. And that's what I love is they're actually drafting to shut down the strengths of the compositions that P1 are drafting. P1 seem to just draft a whole bunch of engage. So if you get Jace, if you get a Lee Sin to kick back, if you get a Gragas to throw down a barrel, if you have a way to actually save your AD carry, who is a mobile AD carry, they are actually drafting to counter P1's tendencies. And it worked out. Special saves, I lost count of them that game. So many times people looked like they were going to be in trouble from a shock wave, from an arrow, from a tidal wave. And every single time he's picking those guys up, taking them to safety, and making it so they're able to properly reset the fight and do it on their terms. Yep, and it, it's once again another game that, like you said, deja vu. It's pretty much just like the game that we had seen yesterday, game two, where Phoenix won. Medios died early off of an invade, and then he ended up having... Uh, a really bad game. He ends up 0-3-1 and one on Rengar, and it ended up being just an awful showing for him. And I think that that's like we're seeing when he gets behind, the other team is snowballing so hard, he loses a lot of agency, and especially on the Rengar, it feels like he doesn't know how to get back into the game on that champion. Yeah, it's just not working out too well for him. Hopefully he and the rest of Phoenix 1 are able to sort of brainstorm up a solution to that real quick now. They have a little bit of time before the next game starts to think about how they want to fix that, how they want to change things up for game number three. But for now, we're going to go ahead and send things over to the analyst to break down how Team yeah, Dignitas tied things up. Thank you very much, Captain Flowers. And for this one, we can start where we usually do. The team comps, looking at where uh, we had P1 coming out, the Shen, the Rengar, end game score, 9-1. to one. How do you get one kill with Shen Rengar not being aggressive? This isn't the P1 we've really seen in the past. I feel like I've seen this comp a lot recently, and, and no teams are playing it that well. Like, the Shen Rengar combination at the start of the split was like, oh my god, this thing's crazy, you can't give it up. And now it's, it's, it's almost like, yeah, give it to them. They'll probably not use it right. It's so funny because this is the same team comp that P1 invented last split. Because before other teams used it, they were the first. And it, they worked with Inori because Inori was like, like a godlike Rengar player. But Medios isn't necessarily well known for his Rengar. He's best on Elise and um, what you call it, Zach, Elise, and Olaf. Mm -hmm. And so it just feels like right now Rengar is a really, really, really good champion, but also a really hard champion to play. And a lot of players aren't playing them very well. Right, and the least the Olaf was banned here, so we see another pickup of the Rengar. We heard the guy say in the cast, there's always a joke of NA Rengar, but it does seem like there's just no follow-up. There isn't the exact composition that these teams need to be putting around the aggressiveness of Rengar. Right, and I think uh, a couple things happened also in the early game that made it a little hard to get the Rengar rolling. First off was like that kind of face check where Medios and Chaser bumped into each other, and Chaser won mm -hmm. that 1v1. Obviously, that sets Medios back. We were talking about the fact that, like, usually Rengars win that, but when we rewatched it, we weren't sure exactly what Medios should have done different. It just, like, the whole fight didn't quite work out. I, right. I think it's only, like, w losable if you take a melee range Q, and then he gets to do more damage before a second Q, where in any other situation, the Rengar wins that. Yeah, and then after that happened, uh, uh, Dignitas actually had a really smart swap to their bottling to the top side right as everyone was hitting six. So usually right. the Rengar hit six, the Shen hit six, the Ash hit six, and you set up this massive dive bot lane. It was a good job by Dignitas swapping out of that potential situation yeah. and just getting the first turret gold in their favor. They had to give up an Infernal Drake to do so, but I think that's a, a fine trade-off. And I think the Kench pick really locked out a lot of the P1's abilities to pick the game. So they have huge pick comp with, sh with uh, you know, Ash, Shen, Rengar, mm -hmm. and Kench just denied just so many picks, oh, or over potential over. picks. And so I think that that pick was really, really smart by Dignitas as well. As well as being able to deny those picks, we also saw, we'll see here at 22 minutes in, that someday coming in with his pick of the Gragas this game was actually just able to cause so much dis disruption in the P1 comp. Right, this was basically the, the game winning fight in a sense. Like it was it was pretty close. Pretty uh, much. For a lot of this game, Dig did have the advantage for a lot of it, but then this flank really opened up P1 to, to give up a lot of kills and, and the Baron buff. And uh, I mean, we were talking a little bit about, oh, maybe Rumble could have worked in this comp as, as a mm -hmm. counter. Uh, but I actually think it was really nice to see Dignitas go with the, the uh, Gragas instead. Somebody showing he's very confident on it, and it's able to set up his team for more kills than a Rumble would, where usually Rumble's bringing the damage. This time it was a lot of Someday bringing the setup for his team. Yeah, it just some, seemed like a very slow game, and P1 tried to make stuff happen, couldn't make stuff, stuff happen up until the mid game, and then eventually Dig just ran with the game. Yeah, I mean, that's such like a low damage numbers, all, totally on the side of 
of P1. It felt like it was almost impossible for them to, to do anything. And, and the fact that I, uh, Ryu really didn't play Orianna that well, and the fact that he's the highest damage member on the team is, is very surprising. Right, a few of the shockwaves being off. We also know that uh, from social media of P1 that Anori is in the house. We do know Anori could bring the aggression that I think we're looking for P1 to have here within these games with the Rengar, with the Shen, to be a little more proactive in their composition. Yeah, it definitely seems like a little lackadaisical almost in the sense where they're, they're not, they, they tried to make plays, but none of right. them were that well thought out. There was always the Tom Kench there to, to counter them. And it, I think I maybe saw them target the Tom Kench once with the Ash Arrow. That's one of the things you see a lot yeah. of teams do is stop trying to pick people near the Tom Kench, start picking the Tom Kench. And I think there's like maybe one attempt that they tried to do it and just barely hit mm -hmm. Ezreal instead of the, the Tom Kench. But uh, overall, it just seems like P1 could use like a jolt of energy. And maybe that's something that Anori can bring. I don't know. Right. Uh, and the thing that I have to realize is that P1 initiates like they just hard initiate every single team comp they have. And so Data Toss is really good at, uh, again, reacting to dives and reacting to that type of initiation. Mm -hmm. Their style is that they don't need to make plays if the other team makes them for them. And then they just turn the plays that get made. Um, I think that they need to be very, very careful about playing into stuff like Zyra, stuff like Kench with their initiations, because if they mess up, it could be a big turn into Dink's favor. Absolutely, and I did just get confirmation that it is going to be Meteos coming in for game three once again, so they're gonna stick with that composition, and all five. Player of the game this time, going over to Expecial, all the saves, the Tom Kench pickup. We kind of wondered when we would see more of it with Varus being banned out, Jin Ash, Jin Ash all over the board. Yeah, and I think Tom Kench is one of the things that we were talking about as being uh, something that we might want to start seeing more mm -hmm. in North America. I think in general, it's, it's a decent pick as long as you're not picking into something that's gonna get bullied super hard, and then I think it's particularly effective against a lot of the NA teams who don't have the cleanest engages. Right, it punishes uh, teams without good synergy very, very difficult, because they are very, very harshly. So what mm -hmm. ends up happening is Kench denies, like, or staggers and initiations so that they can't get a very, very clean initiation. And a lot of the, the teams right now aren't getting, like, three-man initiations. Like, you're not getting Shen Rengar plus the Oriole, right? You're getting Shen Rengar and the Oriole comes in, like, one to two to three seconds after. And because of that, like, Kench really disrupts the combo of the initiation. Well, they seem to use it quite well. It did throw P1 off for the second game, and the teams are all tied up, but only one can claim the win. Go figure. Meet us back here for Game 3 in Phoenix 1 and Dignitas. We'll be right back. That's why I'm saying, yo, guys, let's play like we're, we're from, we're like, from the future, dude. Let's play like we're from season nine, dude. Yeah. Imagine like what knowledge we would have if we were from season we nine. Nami, 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 Nami. Nami, no play. Nami, no play. Nami, 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 Nami,